Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to be sharing some semi-old footage with you of these Studio Ghibli screen cap redraws or draw this in your style challenge type of things. Um, I don't remember exactly what this challenge is called, but I think it's just hashtag redraw. And there are generally some specific screenshots of certain anime series or movies as in this case, it's a uh, Howl's Moving Castle that circulate and people do redraws of. So the reason why I picked these specific footage to show you guys and speed it up is because I wanted to talk about art block and how I tend to deal with it, what I think it is, and what are some strategies to get rid of it or what could be causing it, etc. Anything else you can think of on this particular topic as it comes up. So I haven't done these type of freeform videos in a little while because I've mostly been focusing on just showing you my process and talking about how I approach drawing specific illustrations, so I thought it would be a nice change of pace to just casually talk about an art-related topic instead. I also wanted to mention that this video is sponsored by Skillshare, and I wanted to thank Skillshare for continuing to support my channel and allowing me to create content for you guys, so I'm going to talk about that later. So before I dive into it, let's quickly define what art block is. So to me, art block is the name of the demon that prevents you from drawing. <laughs> I'm obviously joking, but it might as well be because there's literally no difference. It's just an idea. And when you choose to believe that it's something you have, then sure you will have it. But if you refuse to acknowledge that it has any power over you, then it kind of tends to let go. So I'm just going to talk about that a bit later. But first, what is it exactly? Well, it's the situation that you or an artist might find yourself in when you just don't feel inspired or can't draw or when you do try to draw, everything looks terrible and you might either give up immediately or after a few attempts of drawing terrible things that just do not turn out the way you want them to, you will eventually give up and decide that for some reason you cannot draw and thus you think you have art block. I think it is important to acknowledge that this topic can definitely be approached from two distinct angles. So the first angle would be from the point of view of an amateur or a hobbyist type of artist where, oh, sorry guys, the sirens just kept going crazy in the background. Anyways, I was saying that the first way to look at it is from the point of view of an amateur or a hobbyist or someone who's starting out, like a beginner who's still in the stages where they're not sure exactly how to approach art as a whole and don't have any habits that they've honed in on over the years with just experience. So the reason why it's important to distinguish this and the other approach, which is from the point of view of a professional whose livelihood depends on their ability to make art and produce art in a timely manner within constraints, is because, honestly, the approach of the professional when it comes to dealing with this problem is a lot less forgiving than the approach of a hobbyist because there is a lot less at stake and generally speaking you're you're not putting yourself actively in a position where you're losing money or where you're losing clients or people are depending on you so they're totally different situations so in this case, I'm specifically going to mostly focus on how to approach dealing with art block from the point of view of someone whose livelihood does not depend on it. And then I'm going to touch on how I personally deal with it myself and how I have dealt with it over the years since uh, my livelihood does depend on making art at this stage of my life and um, I don't see it as like a huge problem. So anyways. First of all, I wanted to talk about how I perceive art block because I know that it's something that's very loosely defined and nobody exactly agrees on the definition of this term. And it is kind of an ambiguous concept because everybody experiences differently and I've heard some people say that they've had art blocks for years. Obviously that's something I've personally never experienced but I guess that can happen as well and for others it's something that could last days, maybe a couple of weeks. So. The range is pretty vast. Anyways, let's see. So I think that art block is essentially the state in which you cannot draw and it's usually caused by 
a number of factors which I think are more important to the definition than what a block itself is. So I think what tends to cause this state of mind for a person can range from a lack of ideas, total burnout from overworking, creative boredom, visual overload, like overstimulation of visual imagery, or on the other hand just lack of inspiration and not enough external stimuli it could also be a substantial increase in skill which suddenly unlocks the visibility of mistakes which have previously gone unnoticed that's a pretty big one actually that a lot of people tend to overlook and sometimes there's no explanation for it at all and it just appears to come up out of nowhere And all in all, it just leads to a perceived inability to create or obviously in this specific case to make art. So before I unpack each one of those hypothetical causes and how you can potentially combat them, I wanted to talk quickly about the footage that I used in this video and why I specifically chose it and why I think it's highly relevant to the topic of art block. So what you see here are redraws of screen caps from some famous Ghibli movies, specifically Howl's Moving Castle, as you can see, and also in the future Spirited Away. And there's also one more screen cap from the series Avatar The Last Airbender. So the reason why I think these this footage is perfect for this topic is because it's actually an excellent exercise to do if you feel like you have art block because doing this specific challenge or whatever you might want to call it of redrawing an existing screen cap is such a good way to get rid of any anxiety you might have about having a lack of original ideas or being completely unable to come up with something to draw original or not because it already lays out so many problems that are solved for you and essentially the only thing that's left to do is figure out how to translate what you see into your style and it's a really really fun thing to do it's also relatively quick and you can actually learn a ton by doing this so i'm gonna talk more about that a little bit later but just so you know that's the reason why i chose this footage and i actually just came across it when i was looking for things that i have not used and i was happy to find this it's actually really fun for me to watch back too because i don't often do stuff like that but i recall it was a lot of fun and it didn't even take that long so the Howl's Moving Castle one took just a bit over an hour um, and then the Spirit Away one took about two hours and maybe it was like an hour and a half for the last one of these. So as you can see, they're relatively quick and I'm not going to talk too much about the process that I use in these specifically, but essentially it's just a rougher version of the same type of process that I've showed you in my previous videos. So back to the topic of the causes of art block. So, the first one I want to talk about is lack of ideas. It obviously ties into what I just mentioned about doing these type of screen cap redraws, which is definitely a super fun thing to do that I suggest you try if lack of ideas is something that you think is causing your art block. Some other things that you can do to combat this problem is... You can just think about it and remember, try to remember what made you like art in the first place. What was the source of your inspiration to get into art at all? What's your favorite thing about it? Maybe try to remember if it's something like a piece of media that you watch, that you watched or some sort of movie, I don't know, an, an animated series. Maybe it was a comic. So if you recall the source of the inspiration, you can revisit it with fresh eyes. That often helps clear up this art block and kind of reignite the inspiration that you may have felt before. Alternatively, if you mostly feel like you want to draw, but you just really can't think of anything, a really good way to combat this is to never let an idea slip by. So if you find yourself coming up with a random idea, but you're not in a position where you can uh, sit down and draw, you should definitely try to take note of it. So I don't always carry around a notebook. When I do, I will jot it down in a notebook or a sketchbook, but I just as often sometimes will make a quick note on my phone, which is something I'm assuming most people can do. And 
it's super quick doesn't have to be anything detailed you don't have to draw anything if you think of an idea or think that something would be cool it's a great practice to just write it down and then sometimes if it's kind of incoherent you can even get re-inspired by trying to remember what it is that you were trying to jot down in the moment so that's something i definitely recommend doing and another thing is it kind of ties into this whole catching inspiration while it lasts idea so if you find yourself in a place where you have some sort of idling time like if you're waiting for something and you're alone so you don't have anyone to talk to and um you don't really have anything to do instead of going on your phone and just browsing instagram you should take the opportunity to brainstorm on whatever it is that might be your source of inspiration so for me typically this involves thinking about the last thing I left off when I was writing my comic or just thinking about my characters in general, just picking a character, thinking about some sort of scene that I had in mind or anything to trigger any sort of imagery and it's just that easy. Like once I start thinking about it, almost immediately I will completely zone out and come up with like a million new things <laughs> so it's actually one of my most productive ways of coming up with new ideas is like taking a bus or just being in a, in a position where i can't really do anything and i don't have any distractions and i just choose to just retreat into my head and think about things while i have a moment of spare time so i highly suggest doing something like that obviously carefully probably shouldn't do that while you're driving <laughs> But yeah, if you're taking a bus, like actually I found commuting is like the best time to do stuff like that. I've come up with so many ideas just sitting on the bus. So yes. So those are some things you can definitely do if lack of ideas is your problem. So on that, I want to pivot to visual overload. I don't know if I've heard other people talk about this one before, actually. Maybe it's... A specific problem that I have but I find that pretty often if I look at other people's art too much or look at Instagram too much it actually really really kills any enthusiasm I have for drawing in that moment and it can often be a very negative feeling like I don't really know how to explain exactly what causes it but it can some it can be something like just mental fatigue from sensory overload so my brain starts to produce all these negative type of thoughts that usually revolve around just being tired of seeing the level of productivity that other people seem to have just seeing other people's art sometimes when i see too much of other people's art it all starts to look very similar to me maybe it's because instagram kind of does do that maybe it's because i follow people who draw similarly who knows but my point is that looking at other people's art too much can actually cause it, the opposite effect so i noticed that a lot of people say you know look at other people for inspiration etc for me actually that's like one of the worst things i can do in fact when i feel uninspired and when i feel art blocked the worst thing i can do is look for look at random art because it'll just make me want to draw way less than i already do so obviously there are exceptions to that but that's just generally how i feel on the other hand to other people i can easily see how looking at other other people's art can be super inspiring so obviously it's up to you it's a case by case basis type of thing i'm just wa i just wanted to mention that being overwhelmed by visual information is definitely a thing that happens so there's that and also what's another thing that means so burnout there's there's burnout which is a very common occurrence amongst people who don't have a stop signal and tend to work in bursts i'm definitely one of those people so sometimes i will just really need to get something done or really want to get something done and i will work too much way too much for a short amount of time and that can even be just like working several hours a day every day and not taking any days off for like a week or longer or like a couple of weeks if it if it goes into a couple of weeks territory 
that will usually cause some sort of small burnout <laughs> and I've all I've also experienced a situation in which I've worked so much for so long with very like indistinguishable small breaks that overall it just felt like this one long period of months and months of just working way too much and that caused like a totally brutal burnout in which I couldn't or I really just didn't want to draw at all for like months and when I tried I was over it very quickly and I don't know it was just it was not great and um, I definitely don't recommend that you should never get yourself to a point where you can go for weeks without feeling like drawing at all that just definitely means you overworked yourself i know this is probably a less common problem <laughs> than not drawing enough so I'm, i don't want to linger on that specifically but yeah if you find yourself on the overworking side of things definitely try to balance things out and schedule in time off because it's just as important to uh, recharge take some time off and just give yourself some rest so that you can come back with more energy and um you will probably be able to paradoxically produce more art that way than just working too much all the time. So speaking of recharging and rest and scheduling, I want to take a minute to talk about this video sponsor, Skillshare, which is an online learning platform where you can find thousands of classes on a variety of creative topics such as drawing, painting, business, freelancing, writing, and so much more. It's a platform made by and for lifelong learners and creatives looking to expand their pool of knowledge or simply try a new hobby. And a subscription actually grants you unlimited access to all the classes available on the platform. I recently watched a super quick and focused class called Real Productivity, Create Your Ideal Week by Michael Kernjanapricorn. He's actually the founder of Skillshare, which is really cool. Scheduling is super important to stay on top of things and creating harmony in your life, especially as a freelance artist. And this class had a lot of simple strategies that I'm super excited to try out and will certainly help organize your schedule to make sure you're both productive and take some much needed breaks, which requires scheduling. Don't wait to take a break until your body starts giving out. So yeah, I can't wait to implement some of the stuff that I learned from this class and I'm actually pretty obsessed with scheduling myself. So I'm always looking for new ways to improve my productivity and scheduling habits. You can watch this class and hundreds of others on Skillshare by clicking the link in my description and signing up for a free trial. The first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership. Skillshare is super affordable and has no ads. It costs about $10 per month with an annual subscription and you can support your favorite creators directly by just watching their classes on this platform. Find the link and sign up in my description below. So the next thing I want to talk about is a substantial increase in skill, which suddenly unlocks the visibility of mistakes which have previously gone unnoticed. So that's uh, the best way that I could shorten that concept. So essentially just a level up in skill often, to me at least, produces kind of an art block, I would say. So generally I would start drawing and everything just looks kind of wrong and it does not look great. And this doesn't happen that often, but it actually happened to me the other day. So yesterday I was dealing with this problem. Um, I would say it occurs like once or twice, maybe like three times a year or something like that. And I suspect it has something to do with leveling up because suddenly things just really don't look as good. And then I find that if I look back on my older artwork, I can often see mistakes that I have not been able to see before. And I'm happy to say that this is something that does not stop. So like, even though I've been drawing for 15 years or something, this is a cycle that just continuously occurs. Maybe it doesn't happen as fast as it used to when I was starting out, but it's something that I definitely experience to a large degree. And um, yeah, even some work from like a couple of years ago just suddenly looks not that great <laughs> sometimes. And the, the weird thing is that it happens kind of suddenly and that's what tends to feel very destabilizing and to me personally that tends to cause something that I could describe as art block. So how I deal with that is usually just straight up draw through it is what I generally 
try to do but sometimes that doesn't work and I end up making several sketches that just none of them work out and I just stop if I can afford to <laughs> that is if if I'm on a short deadline I just have to roll with it regardless and I just have to make do with the fact that the result is gonna be kind of worse than I think it could be but you know it's just something I have to deal with but anyways when a deadline is not a factor I would say a good thing to do would just be to step away and maybe take some time to look for inspiration outside or of yourself obviously because on the other hand sometimes when I find myself unsure of what to draw or just not really feeling like it I can actually get a ton of inspiration from looking on my past body of work and just reminding myself of the stuff that I have produced before and that sometimes actually works really well to uh, getting me excited to make more artwork but that's not always the case so when the opposite happens and I look at my old work and all I see is mistakes that's usually time to just step away get a little bit of a break and then come back to it fresh later or like I've mentioned earlier just do some studies doing some studies is always an excellent art block solver for people who don't do a lot of studies so I can see how some people could feel like they get art block after doing a ton of studies because obviously doing a ton of studies could cause you to improve so it is again a thing that you figure out on a case-by-case -case basis so for me personally sometimes I make an improvement jump just when I challenge myself and do something difficult it doesn't have to be study related it doesn't have to be like a purely improvement based endeavor maybe it's just something that's a challenge and it'll make me level up and then I won't feel like I'll just suddenly start seeing mistakes so that's usually a pretty good point to try studying so yeah Speaking of studying, I wanted to circle back to the screen cap redraws that are in this video. So one of the reasons why I love doing this so much, but it's actually not something that I can do very often because it does get a little bit boring if done too much. The thing that I love about this exercise is that it really makes it so clear what the components of my personal decision making and thus style actually are because when I'm dealing with the source material that looks usually like very different especially with animation screen caps it's an excellent way to zero in on your own preferences so for instance for me since my style is significantly more detailed and complex than that of an animation screen cap the whole process kind of revolves around filling in what's not there so i usually add a lot more detail and i will shade in a more pronounced way and render everything out in a lot more detail than the screen cap that i see and all of that is you know, it's, it's a pretty big challenge, I find, to pull information out of thin air, but having to take the constraint of what you're working with into consideration. Because, I mean, I do that all the time anyways, most of the time when I draw something new. I am not a huge fan of referencing things all the time, so I will often just kind of pull most things out of thin air. But it's easy when it's just based on all your own decisions 100%. Whereas when you're working with some sort of source material and you're trying to recreate something, it's like a different set of problems and it is kind of challenging and it's a lot of fun. Where And I, another thing that I kind of want to try in the future that I haven't tried before is doing these types of screen cap redraws but from movies. So that would be an entirely different set of challenges because in that case I would have to learn how to simplify and uh, take information away or like try to communicate in a more stylized manner rather than adding what isn't already there so that's a little bit of an off-topic thing but there are definitely things like there's so much value you can get out of doing screen cap re redraws and it's something that's so simple and so easy to pick up because i know that often figuring out what to study or like what artist to study or like what body part what problem to tackle can be super overwhelming like for me 
I often struggle picking a thing to focus on because there's so many things that I can think of off the top of my head that I would like to improve on. It often just causes me complete paralysis in terms of which direction to take. So doing little studies like this can um, just ease, ease the decision making aspect of these things. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about when it comes to art block. I, I don't think art block is a huge problem for me personally. I know that it obviously varies from person to person and I have, as I mentioned before, seen people talk about how they have experienced years long art block and that sounds awful and unfortunately since that's not something that I have personally experienced, I don't have any advice for that situation specifically. But when it is more short term, I do often utilize more tough love techniques with myself <laughs> because obviously I can allow myself to do that. And I don't mean like, you know, be rude to yourself and like think of yourself as a loser or anything like that. It's more just like understanding the consequences of failing and after a certain amount of time, the con the consequences are just like they just become mounting so sometimes you do have to just kind of get over yourself and just do the work but more often than not it's it's best to just go through the options that i've mentioned to combat it in a more gentle gentle approach which obviously applies more to people that are not struggling with deadlines so yeah i hope that was helpful and um I hope that this is the type of video that can just keep you company while you're drawing and yeah, thanks so much for watching my video and thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring it and I will be back with more and please feel free to leave suggestions for future topics that you would potentially like to hear me talk about. <laughs>